morning on this Palm Sunday. I greet you all in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. May the Lord be with us, as I know he is this morning, wherever we are, wherever we are worshiping. Will you pray with me? O oh, gracious and holy and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts today be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, for only in you do we find reconciliation and grace and redemption and new life. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Back in the day, a long time ago, in a time we've almost forgotten, when we could gather together as a group of strangers for one purpose or another and participate in something called an icebreaker. An icebreaker, a way of sharing something about ourselves and, and, order, and in doing so, get to know a little bit more about each other. A good icebreaker that I remember was a question. And the question went like this. Answer this. As a child, what was your first memory? When you look back and think back, what is the first memory you have as a child growing up? Think for a second. What was your first or earliest memory? as a child. I'll share with you mine. My first or earliest memory, I believe it was when I was either around four or five years old, was taking my father's hand and crossing a street. It was kind of scary because the road was busy walking across that street. But holding on to my father's hand, I felt safe and secure. Our clergy cluster is currently reading a book together. It's entitled Just Enough Light for the Step that I'm On. And the author is named Stormy Amartian. It's a good book. It's a very good book. The author writes these words. She says, life is a walk. And each day that we take steps, one after another, and tomorrow, she says, is determined by the steps that we take today. Hmm. Life is a walk. Each day we take steps, and tomorrow is determined by the steps that we take today. She goes on to say these words. She says, when both of my children learn to walk, they didn't get far very far without falling. Remember those days as parents? They fared much better if they reached out and took my hand or their father's hand. We were able to guide them away from danger and get them safely where they needed to go. But she said, sometimes they quickly headed off without our help. My son would end up falling down and hurting himself or my daughter would wander off to some place she wasn't supposed to go and get into trouble. Occasionally, she writes, we allowed those things to happen because we wanted them to eventually learn to walk without our assistance. Of course, she said, we did step in and protect them when we saw danger. But our goal, our goal was always to prepare them for the day when they would no longer need our help. And we were thrilled, thrilled, when we saw them experience that joy of freedom for the very 
first time. The only thing I can say is, boy, do we Americans enjoy our freedom. We can't wait to let go of mom and dad's hand and head out on our own. I believe our American culture has baked into its very DNA the adulation of liberty, personal freedom, and independence. We don't want to have to hold onto anyone else's hands or to be told that we have to do so. We get our dander up and dig in our heels when government tries to tell us to wear our motorcycle helmets or our bike helmets, to wear seat belts, not smoke wherever we want to, wear masks, keep social distances, distances, or get back vaccinations. And the list could go on and on and on. We say we'll just walk all by ourselves, thank you. And yet, the author Stormy Omartian reminds us in her book that for people of faith, learning to walk with God, our Heavenly Father, is somewhat different. She says that unlike our learning how to walk with our earthly parents, our heavenly parent wants us to reach up and take his hand and never, ever let go. Never, ever let go for the rest of our lives. The image of taking hold of God's hand and never, ever letting go, surrendering our liberty, our freedom, our independence, to do whatever we want, whatever pleases us, to God's control and directions of our lives, has helped me to better understand the passion story of Jesus that begins today with Palm Sunday and moves on through the week to Holy Thursday, the Upper Room, and his crucifixion on Friday. When we read the story of Jesus' life in the Gospels, I believe we see a man who, on the day of his baptism, heard the words of his Heavenly Father say, This is my Son my beloved. And he reached out and took God's outstretched hand, grabbed on, and he never let go. All the way, all the way that day to the gates of Jerusalem and into the mouth of the beast, into a place ruled by Roman power whose number one priorities was to keep peace, and order at whatever cost into the center of his Jewish faith, ruled by a Jewish temple, ruling class, compromised and corrupted by power and wealth, and willing to crush anything, anything that stood in its way. all the way, all the way, to that night in an olive garden called Gethsemane, where he shared with his disciples after their meal together in the upper room, saying, my soul is crushed and distressed to the point of death. When he prayed to God, my father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. When he said to God, not my will, but thy will be done. Holding
holding on tight to his father's hand this week, Jesus rode on. In the great Christian hymn, Were You There? We sang these words. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble. Yes, we tremble at what Jesus went through for all of us this week, for all people this week. But do we also tremble at the thought that it was God's will? What kind of a father would will that for his beloved son? Once again, at this time of the Christian year, I turn to the writing of Leslie Weatherhead, a renowned and revered British Methodist preacher of the last century, who wrote a wonderful little book that I highly recommend to you. It's still in print. It's entitled the words of God, excuse me, the will of God. These are the words, some of the words that Pastor Weatherhead wrote about his understanding of the will of God as it, as it deals with Jesus' death on the cross. He writes, was it God's intention from the beginning that Jesus should go to the cross? I think the answer to that question, he said, must be no. I don't think Jesus thought at the beginning of his ministry. He came with the intention that men and women should follow him, not kill him. The discipleship of men, not the death of Christ, was the intentional will of God. But Weatherhead continues saying, but when the circumstances wrongly, excuse me, when the circumstances wrought by men's evil set up such a dilemma that Christ was compelled either to die or to run away, then in those circumstances, the cross was the will of God. But only in those circumstances, which were themselves the fruit of evil. In those circumstances, any other way was unworthy and impossible. And it was in this sense that our Lord said these words, Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. Then Weatherhead continues saying, Then there is a third sense in which we use the phrase, the will of God, when we mean God's ultimate goal. In regards to the cross, he writes, God achieved his final goal, not simply in spite of the cross, but through it. He achieved a great redemption and realized his ultimate will in as full a sense as he would have done if his intentional will had not been temporarily defeated. Yes, it may not have worked out as Jesus first believed it would, but Easter morning proves that one day it will, and it will be complete. Can I get an amen? So on this Palm Sunday in the year of the Lord, 2021, as we begin today's journey, walking behind and alongside Jesus, riding into Jerusalem, we ask ourselves an important question. Just who do we think we are? Who do we think we are? As the Apostle John reminds us in his first chapter, in verses 12 and 13, to all who received Jesus, he said, to those who believe in his name, 
he gave right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Born of God. Yes, we are children of God. And as obedient children like Jesus, we are called to surrender our will to God's. We take his hand, just like Jesus, and we never, ever let go, no matter what, no matter what. God's desire, I believe, is that as we grow, as we continue to walk in Jesus' footsteps, as we mature in faith, in hope, and in love, we become more and more, rather than less and less, dependent upon God. And when God takes us by the hand, God leads us in a different direction, to different places than where we usually want to go. The place where God's grace and mercy and healing redeeming and reconciling love is needed. That's where we are led. The Apostle Paul says it this way. He tells those early Christians and perhaps tells us here as well today. He said, do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold, hold out the word of life to others. Yes, it's true. Life is a walk. Each day in our lives, we take steps and tomorrow is determined by the steps we take today. And it's also true as children of God, we can't, we can't walk very well unassisted, unassisted. So this Passion Week, let us walk in Jesus's footsteps through the valley of the shadow of death. One step one step at a time, and pray the words of the great Easter hymn. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm lone. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows dear, precious Lord, linger near. When my light is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call. Hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. May we Together, one step at a time, walk, walk through Passion Week, through Holy Thursday, through Good Friday, and arrive together in joy, with joy, on Easter morning as his church. May it be so, and God bless you. Amen.